All right, we're back, and we're going to start on the uh, tip panels or the ailerons for the Liberty F5J. So here's the tip panel. This is the bottom surface. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very high quality. Here's the top. You've got the blue wipers and nice stripes on the tip out here. Blue and yellow uh, Ukrainian colors. And there's a pre-installed uh, horn in the surface, and the IDS arm is in there. And uh, a little bit different than the flaps because these horns are um, custom-made uh, fiberglass horns. They're not the plastic horns that come with the IDS kits. So that's a little different, but it's a very clean installation. And again, we have the... Um, arm pre-installed. So it's much the same as the um, flap servo install. Um, going to be using the shortest arm. Let me get this camera down a little bit. So if this is the um, tree of arms for the servo. I'm, I'm using the smallest one here. And a real quick measurement from center to center, it's like four to four and a half millimeters. Um, so with these arms, they can be very tight. Um, as I did with the flap servos in the flap servo video, I put some grease on the output shaft. Um, since these are really short horns, we can't push the pin in after the servo is in place. So we have to put the horn into the frame, put the arm in, then push the pin in, and then slide the servo in and then bolt the servo down. So what I like to do, because that's kind of a, a bit more difficult than the, the flap setup, so what I like to do is after I get the arm on with the grease, I just uh, pull it off, pull it on, pull it off. You know, I'll do this like 10 times until it's somewhat easy to um, take the arm off and replace it. That's going to save us some headaches when we have to um, install the servo. So you're kind of just bedding that horn onto the output shaft of the servo and cutting those grooves a little deeper and just making it easier to install. It's just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and prep um, the frames and stuff. I'm not going to go over that because we did that in the flap video. So if you want to see that, just uh, head back. Or maybe I'll leave a link or something and watch that video. Okay, so I got the arm and the bearing in the frame. And you can see I put the pin, kind of just started it a little bit. And uh, I'm going to try to get this frame in here. We're doing things a little differently than the flap servo. So we need to um, connect up this arm to the servo horn, whatever you want to call it. I think it got started there. Let's see if we can run it in a little more. Oh. Well, if it got started, it got unstarted. Fiddly things, my friends. Fiddly things. I 
do some dentistry here. There we go. Should have been a dentist. Definitely have the skill set for it, and I would have actually probably made money in life, but instead I choose to mess with toy airplanes. On the plus side, I don't like dealing with people very much, so let alone having my hands stuck in their mouths. So there we go, the frame is, uh, is hooked up. So uh, the the order of pr of pr uh, procedures or whatever here is going to be we're going to kind of try to get some epoxy in here in and around the frame to glue it down. Um, then I'm going to put a piece of plastic in like I normally do to protect the servo from the resin. Then we'll bolt the servo down, make sure it's centered, and then uh, let everything cure up. I forgot to put these little bits of tape on the uh, mounting holes on the bottom of the tray. So remember to do that before you put the tray in. And also I should mention that you should scuff up the servo bay area with some sandpaper and vacuum it out and clean it with some alcohol before you uh, glue anything in there. I'm getting ready to glue the servos in. So a little bit more prep work here. Uh, the frames are in the wing, as I showed you earlier, and I'm going to um, tape up the aileron so they don't move. And I've plugged in the tip panel to the center panel. The center panel is taped, uh, I mean the flap is taped, uh, taped up at center. So I need to basically get the aileron uh, somewhat close with the flap. So I think what I'll do is... I think I'll temporarily tape up tape the aileron to the flap something like that and then I'm going to put some masking tape across the uh, the gap there Again, uh, fold up one side, one edge, so you don't have to dig into your wing with your fingernail when you want to peel it off. I'll just do several pieces. be pretty good and then what I'm going to do is I'll remove that and get the aileron free And then I'm going to take another piece here and kind of go like that. That locks up the aileron pretty good. So I'll go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Alright, here's the challenging bit. we got to get these servos in. So I'm just going to kind of push that horn where it might want to be. And then I'm going to actually hold for processing. Put a piece of tape right here. I don't want to be a slob. Like that. And what, 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 what? Okay, I got resin. And I mixed it up a little thinner than I normally would. So this application's a little different. Get some hemostats, and I'm gonna try to 
sort of lift the frame up. Okay, the key is going to be not to drip. I'm going to lift this guy up. Get some resin going. Something like that. Do it on the other side too. I don't know why I'm whispering, but it's late at night and there's nobody in my house but me. But I'll whisper. that in there and that actually doesn't look too terrible put a little bit over here like that yeah. might just leave it like that for now and I'm going to try to get some the front here, and I have this little bent <clears throat> piece of rod or wire or whatever you want to call it, and I'll just get that under there. In the corner. Cool. Not that wasn't as painful as I had thought. Piece of plastic as per usual. And I'm just gonna kind of try to slide it on in there. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Now, get your servo tester device thing. See, this is the left wing, and I marked my servos left and right. Oh, and I also put the... <coughs> I also put the rear brace on here, and it's not quite totally tight. There's a little bit of slop so <clears throat> plug the servo in and I'm not gonna have the arm going straight up and down I'm actually going to have it like one tooth tilted towards the trailing edge because generally uh, with installations like this I always get more down travel than up so I'm gonna offset it to try to even that out Somewhat. So we gotta see if the servo will cooperate. Okay, it's sort of in, and this is the part that I don't like because uh, if the horn, the the or the servo arm is real tight, this can be kind of a pain in the butt and it's kind of hard to even grab onto things here but basically so I'll try to push the servo into the horn without ruining anything. What am I looking for? Flathead. And it seems to be 
working. A little coercion. There's give it a squeeze this way. Okay. It's probably a bad idea. It's kinda close enough, but I wish I could get it just a bit more seated. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay, I really don't want to push anymore. I'm seeing the holes here, so I'm going to poke my knife through, through the plastic, and let's get some screwage. See if we can get these started. Good, good. That one does not want to start. Yeah. Definitely have to get this guy closer to the arm. There we go. That's how you do it. Just squeeze on the mounting lugs. Perfect. Might have learned something today. And it started. So get both the big screws started. Um did I poke holes for the small ones? No. Poke holes through the plastic. That one started. I must say the screws that come with the IDS kits, the heads on them are not ideal. They, they, I haven't found screwdrivers that fit them perfectly. And now we gotta Very gently run these guys in. Had to grab a Bigger screwdriver. All right. Well, that was. Painful, but not as painful as I thought. 
And I did make some of these foam shims out of Roso. It was the same thing I did with the flaps. Um, again, you could use balsa. Get a better angle on this for you. And let's see if we can get them in here. Okay. Seems like it'll go in, so let's get our handy little wire thingamabob and we'll just get some epoxy in there. I wonder if you can hear the rain on the on the ceiling. It's had just about a month straight of rain in Southern California. So that means no flying. No flying, not much cycling, not much beach volleyball. Can do some building and fixing, but I am going slightly stir crazy so I don't think I would survive in Seattle or any other place where it rained incessantly parts of the UK I imagine I don't know okay and brush some Top surface of this guy. I don't have to go crazy. Oops! Almost committed a party foul, people. Almost dropped this straight on the wing. That tells you exactly how crazy I've become. I didn't. I saved it. I saved it. Okay, so let's slide this guy in here. That's why I put the tape. On there. I'll just send, send it in so it's flush. And wipe off the excess there. Perfect. So the next thing I would do is just um, wiggle the servo, <coughs> wiggle the servo around till the arm is perpendicular to the um, hinge line. And if you want to get super duper fancy, you could use a a square and lay it down like this. If you're an overachiever, uh, you can. Use that as a guide. Looks really good to me. And then we're just going to take some of our handy old weights or ballast or whatever you happen to have, set that on top, and let this cure however long you need to. In my case, probably at least a day since it's been slightly lower temperatures. It's about 20-ish hours later, maybe more, and the epoxy is pretty well cured. And I have the servo hooked up to the servo tester. Again, we use the uh, smallest arm in the IDS kit, and I'll just show you the travels. Perfect. Um, I'd say we're going to end up using something like 70% of the available travel. So um, not bad, not bad. Um, a shorter arm would be nicer on the servo, but that's not possible. 
with the IDS kit so we're gonna go with this next thing to do is um, next thing to do is get the uh, servo lead let me move the camera here out of the uh, end of the wing um, these servos have really short leads if your servos have longer leads you could just go straight out no problems but I think I'm going to try to 3d print another little doohickey here that will allow the lead to come out of the root but won't allow it to like drop back in so you won't be in a situation where you're trying to fish out your servo lead so I printed up these little guys they're like little sockets and they're gonna glue in just like we glued in the ones in the uh, center panel and they have a hole in the back oops for the um, servo wire to go through easily but they should stop the uh, connector from slipping through. Next thing I'm going to do is use these bits of, uh, I think these are uh, 26 gauge wire, servo wire, and I'm going to make just a couple of short extensions for the uh, aileron servos. This is what I got going on here. I got the female end crimped on and this is our pocket so we can see it it recesses in there quite a bit about eight millimeters but it won't pull through all the way so that's kind of exactly what I was going for so now I'll put the uh, other ends on this side so I had to enlarge the hole in the root here and I just put some masking tape on and traced around the plug and used the Dremel to do that and it's fitting really nicely so that'll get glued flush with the root and that should be about it um, after we do that um, we'll just basically put the servo covers over the servo bay hook up the extensions first and that'll be the tip panels done so let me go ahead and glue these guys in this is what my extension looks like Alright, here's my servo lead pocket or whatever you want to call it installed so the plug can go back into that recessed pocket but it can't go all the way in, it can't drop into the wing and it can pull out some so pretty happy with that so I'm going to uh, hook up the servos to these extensions that I made and uh, get the servo covers on and we'll be about done with the wingtips. Alright, I got the connectors um, hooked up here and they're wrapped with electrical tape just tucked up like that and we're ready to put the servo cover on I've already done the other side And I've cut up some of that um, pinstripe tape that I got off Amazon. Peeled the backing off. I just kind of tacked it to one end and I'm going to just try to split the middle here. like that do the other side same way and I have a few longer pieces for the front and back them on the same way
And there we go, that wraps up the Liberty wingtip panels. All done. Got the neat little servo plug retention pocket right there. And uh, now we can move on to the uh, fuselage and the tails. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.